Hi boys and girls. In this video, I'm going to be doing your science lesson with you today. Uh, in your science book today, we are going to begin, be beginning Unit 8, which begins on page 293. So if you want to get your science book out and take a minute to find that page 293, 293, and then as soon as you're ready, um, you can start the video again. So go ahead and pause it, turn to the page that you need to be on, and then unpause it when you're ready and we'll begin. All right, so you should have your page open to 293. It looks like this, if that helps. And we are going to go through this chapter together. So I'm going to move myself out of the way here. And what I have done on this page, I've already gone through and put in those vocabulary terms for you. Um, these are the terms that we are going to be reading about as we read through this lesson. So if you want to take a moment down here where we have the five vocab terms, sun, star, moon, magnify, and telescope. If you want to pause the video and in your best handwriting, you can write those five answers in. And then we will continue to learn more about those terms so that at the end we can come back and answer this engage our brain question. So go ahead and pause, enter in those five vocab words on your paper, and then when you're ready to continue, come on back and unpause. I'll wait for you. Okay, so you should have all of these words written in. I'm going to go ahead now and turn the page. You can do the same, and then I'll just need to rotate my screen a couple of times so that um, we're looking at the page the right way. Here we go. So we should be looking at these two pages now and I will read to you. And as I read, it would be very, very smart of you to use your reading finger and follow along. Uh, now that we're not in the classroom, I can't watch to make sure you're doing this, so I have to trust you. And you know, we, we know that I'm really big on trust, so I trust that while I'm reading this to you, you're using that reading finger to follow along so that you're not only hearing me say the words, but you're seeing them with your eyes, and that helps lock them into your brains. So on page 294, you're following along. Good morning, sunshine. Look up. You can see many things in the daytime sky. You can see the sun. The sun is the star closest to Earth. A star is an object in the sky. It gives off its own light. The sun gives light and heat to the Earth. You may also see clouds in the daytime sky. Sometimes you can even see the moon. The main idea is the most important idea about something. So draw two lines under the main idea. Well, if I was looking back on what I just read to you, I've heard a lot about the sun and the stars and the moon and the clouds, but all of these things, if I'm trying to find the main idea, I would say have to do with the daytime sky. So I'm going to take my highlighter here. You can take your either highlighter or a pen and it says draw two lines under. I'm going to highlight you do what you have to do because you know it's a little different when we're working from home. But right here you can see many things in the daytime sky. That is the main idea of what we just read about. We read that the sun is there and that the sun is a star and the stars give off light and we can sometimes see the moon in the daytime sky and we can see clouds in the daytime sky, but the big idea that that whole paragraph is about is that we can see a lot of things in the daytime sky. So now if we go on to page 295, it says here, what can you see in the daytime sky? Look out your window and draw what you see. So today is kind of a gloom and doom sort of day. So if you want to draw a day, maybe last week when it was much more beautiful outside, I'll let you go ahead and do that now. But if you just want to take a moment, um, you can pause this video while you do it and draw out your window what you see in the daytime sky. Go ahead, I'll wait. All right, so hopefully you've got a beautiful picture drawn there of what we see in the daytime sky. If I were drawing this picture, I probably would have drawn blue skies up at the top, probably a sunshine, maybe some clouds, maybe even a very faint moon because like we read about, sometimes we can see the moon. 
So now we can go ahead and turn the page and now we're going to read about the nighttime sky. So again, I want you to be following along with your reading finger. I'm not there to see it, but I can trust you. So this says, good night sky. You can see many things in the nighttime sky. You may see the moon. The moon is a large sphere or ball of rock. It does not give off its own light. You may also see clouds at night. Draw one line under a detail. Draw an arrow to the main idea it tells about. So our main idea is what this whole paragraph was about and they want us to draw a line under a detail. So I'm thinking the main idea here is there are many things we can see in the nighttime sky. And a detail is one of the smaller things that add information about that main idea. So the moon is a large sphere. That's a detail that tells us something about the nighttime sky. You can choose your own detail. And once you're done underlining it or highlighting it, draw an arrow up to the main idea, which is here, you can see many things in the nighttime sky. Over on page 297, it says, you may see stars in the nighttime sky. There are too many stars to count. They are not evenly spaced in the sky. So we know that a star, um, it's a burning mass, often gas and rock and other things that are burning. So it puts off a flame or a fire, which is why it feels hot when we feel the sun. We know that the sun is the biggest star in our atmosphere and universe. And that's why we feel heat from the sun. Now the moon actually isn't burning. It's not a fire. It doesn't give off its own light. The light from the moon actually comes from the sun reflecting on it and then shining back on us. Kind of like if you shine a light on a mirror and then you can see it um, projecting that light. So the moon doesn't give off its own light, but the sun and the stars do. Down here it says do the math. Compare solid shapes. Well, we just learned all about solid shapes in math over the past two weeks. It says many objects in the sky are spheres. A sphere is a round ball. The moon is a sphere. So is the sun. Color the spheres below. So you're going to take a minute and you're going to color the spheres. So I've got a sphere here that I can color in. That's one ball. This is a cone, so I'm not going to color that. This is a cube, so I'm not going to color that. And then here's a smaller sphere. So once you have both of those spheres colored in, oops, I don't know what happened there, go ahead and turn your page again. All right, so follow along. It says, eye on the sky. Stars and other objects in the sky look small. When we're sitting down here on Earth and we look out, they look very tiny. But we can magnify them to see them better. Magnify means to make something look bigger, like when we've used a hand lens before in our classroom. Well, a telescope is a tool that helps us magnify things in the sky. And you can see the boy there is using a telescope. So it actually uses magnifying glasses to look way out into the sky and show things up close. So here we have two pictures and it says which one shows the moon through a telescope mark an x on it so here this just looks like i'm looking out a window i can see the moon up in the sky and some water and some land but right here the moon is very large so it's been magnified so i'm going to put the x on this one to show that that is the moon that is being shown through a telescope both of those pictures show the moon. One is far away and one is much more up close. All right. When you are finished marking your X, we can turn the page again. And now I have to turn this back for you all. And we're going to do our sum it up page. So it says, solve the riddle. I am a tool. I make things look bigger. You can use me to observe things in the sky. Hmm, what did we learn about today that's a tool that makes things look bigger and we can use it to observe things in the sky? If you said telescope, you are absolutely right. So I am going, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Let me get rid of that. 
I am going to take my pen and I'm going to write telescope on the line and you can go ahead and write it on your line as well. So it's T E L E S C O P E. And if you need to pause to um, take your time to write that nicely, go ahead and pause and you can unpause me whenever you are finished. Um, it's the word telescope. Okay. Number two says circle it. Circle true or false. So there's some questions and we're going to circle if we think they're true or if we think they're false. So the first one here says stars are evenly spaced in the sky. That means that they're every single star is the exact same distance apart from every single other star. And we learn that that's actually false. That's not true. Some stars are very close together and others are rather far apart. They're not even. There might be a bunch of stars close together here and then not stars for miles and then more stars here. So that's false. Stars are not evenly spaced. The next one here says stars give off their own light. Think for a minute. Do stars give off their own light? Well, I know that stars are like burning flames and I know that flames give off light. So yeah, that's true. I'm going to circle true for that one. Stars give off their own light. Okay. Now, down here it says draw it. Draw what you can see in the sky at both times. So here I have daytime and here I have nighttime. So I don't want you to rush on this. I want you to take your time and make these daytime and nighttime pictures look really nice. And when you are finished with your daytime and nighttime picture, I want you to take a picture of this whole Sum It Up page and upload that to Class Dojo for me so I can get you some points in the grade book. I hope you had fun learning about daytime and nighttime sky with me today. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye.